Amen? So let's all say this together. By grace, through faith. Everything is by grace, through faith. So you want a breakthrough? It's by grace, through faith. You want a miracle? It's by grace, through faith. See, but what about fasting? Fast and pray to make yourself strong. Fast and pray to change yourself. Fast and pray to deal with your own issues. But if you're going to receive something from God, it's by grace through faith. Romans 4, and continuing that same verse, he says, Romans 4, 16, he says, Therefore it is of faith that it might be according to grace, so that the promise might be sure to all the seed, or that the promise might be equally given to all the seed, all of the children of God. So here's the point. It's through faith, or it's by grace through faith, so that everybody has equal access to it. So that the promise might be sure to all the seed. To everybody, whether they're Jewish or not. That everyone can have equal access to the promise of God. God made it by grace through faith. So nobody can say, I did 10 good works to get it. And somebody says, well, I had to do 12 before I got it. That's unfair. Yes, it's not of works. It's by grace, through faith, so that the promise can be opened up to all of the children. All God's children have equal opportunity to all the promises of God. Because it's all by grace, through faith. Amen? Amen? Somebody may take 10 steps together. Somebody may take 12 steps together. But once you get there, it's by grace through faith. And no one can boast. So the last few weeks, we've seen several things. On the very first Sunday, we saw truth and grace. How they, are both, how they both flow together and are revealed in the person of Jesus Christ. Last Sunday, we talked about mercy and grace. How they are both an expression of God's uh, favor towards us. Today you're seeing something else. You're seeing faith and grace. How they both have to coexist and work together in the life of the believer. Faith and grace. Everything in our walk is by grace through faith. I want to close with this. That God's saving grace justifies us freely. Many of us are familiar with this truth, but it's good to repeat it this morning. That God's saving grace justifies us freely. To be justified simply means to be brought into a place where we are made just as if we never sinned. Just as if you never sinned. So regardless of what the past looks like, regardless of you know, how many people you killed, how many people you murdered, how many banks you robbed, Regardless of all that, once you're saved, you've been justified. You've been made just as if you've never sinned. Now God describes it in so many different ways, hoping that at least some of us will get it. He says, as far as the east is from the west, so far I've taken your sins away from you. Well, if you don't understand dimensions horizontally, let's try the vertical. So he says... I've buried your sins in the depths of the sea. Just another way to say, look, I've erased them. And if you don't understand that, he makes it even explicit both in the old and the new. He says, I will remember your sins and your iniquities no more. There are some things God does forget. I will remember your sins and your iniquities no more. I'll not remember them. He says that. The problem is that you and I, even after we become believers in the Lord Jesus Christ, after we've come to the cross and said, Lord, forgive me, wash me with your blood, we still, we want to pay for our own sins. We keep going back and saying, God, I'm sorry. 25 years ago, God, I did this. I'm sorry. 
We keep going back to the same stuff which God says, as far as the east is from the west, so far I've taken it away from you. I've buried it in the depths of the sea. Your sins and iniquities I remember no more. And we keep reminding God of what He wants to forget. And we want to pay a debt we don't owe. It's already been paid for. So many of us, well-meaning, Bible-believing Christians, continue to live under a cloud of guilt, shame, and condemnation because we have not received justification by grace through faith. Just embrace it. It's given to you by grace. All you do, receive it by faith. Look at these scriptures here in Romans 3.24. The Bible says, Being justified freely by His grace. Being justified freely. And you, don't, you didn't do anything to merit this. Being justified freely by His grace. Romans 5 verses 1 and 2 says this, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Just say this out with me. I have peace with God. I have a harmonious relationship with God. You know, maybe last night you kicked the cat, chased the dog, threw a few utensils around. I don't know what you did at home. You went to bed angry. But in the morning you woke up and you said, maybe God's angry with me. Why? I mean, he saw me chase the cat. He saw me do all these silly things. I lost my cool. I... The Bible says we have peace with God. I am not condoning wrongdoing. We'll deal with that next Sunday. But what I am trying to emphasize this morning is, regardless of what you've done or what you have not done, you have been justified by faith and you have peace with God. You can always come into that place where you say, God, I'm sorry for what I've done. It's over. Forgive me, God. And you step into this great place of grace. Verse 2 says, by faith, we have access into this grace in which we now stand. By faith, we come into this position of grace by which, in which we now stand. So what do you do? It's your faith that allows you to enjoy this position of grace that you have before God. Where you have this harmonious relationship with God, it doesn't matter if I just did something wrong. You know, and, and it affects us in so many different ways. Somebody comes to pray for you, and you say, man, last evening I was watching the cricket match, India and or where they go? New Zealand. Sure. I, was watch, I spent so much time inside me, I felt like I must pray and prepare for Sunday, but I was watching the match. So you feel unworthy to pray for that person. Now, it's a good thing if you can turn your TV off and go and pray. But you haven't become any less justified because you watched the cricket match. All the men say amen. Come on, man. <laughs> or you haven't become any more justified just because you prayed. Now, please don't get misunderstood. I'm not saying don't pray. I pray. I encourage you to pray. And we pray a lot. What I'm saying is your works don't justify you. You've been justified by grace. And the way you enjoy it is by faith. By faith, we enter into this grace in which we stand. Where we have peace with God. So you can have peace with God 24-7, all the time. Enjoy your harmonious relationship with God. You may make mistakes, you may chase your cat, or you may do all those kinds of silly things, but you can still enter into that place of grace before God. You've been justified by grace. Freely by His grace. You don't do anything to merit it. You don't do anything to qualify for it. 